Here is the summary of the poem An Elementary School Classroom in a Slum by Stephen Spender. The poet begins the poem by illustrating a handful of students sitting inside a classroom in a slum school. The children are far removed from the waves and the breeze and are deprived of sun and fresh air. They seem like rootless weeds, thin, weak and unwanted, with their hair scattered around their pale and colorless faces. The poet describes a tall girl sitting with her head bowed down as if she is a wilting flower. Not far from her, he notices a boy, frail and sickly, seemingly made from paper and with eyes like those of a rat's. Another boy in the class has twisted bones, a genetic disorder that he seems to have inherited along with the poverty. In contrast to this, too, a sweet, quiet boy sits almost unnoticed at the back of the dim class. He appears to be daydreaming. The poet imagines that he might be yearning to play freely like a squirrel on a tree far away from his current boxed-in surroundings. The poet then describes the environment in the classroom. The walls, painted sour cream, are dingy and are decorated with donated things. A picture of Shakespeare, an image of the dawn over a city, a painting of a flower-decked mountain valley, and most significantly, a map depicting the world. These things represent a world of beauty, learning, and joy that is far removed from the student's world. For them, the reality is the grey fog outside the windows, a life full of adversity. Their reality includes narrow streets and grey skies, which are stifling and which offer no chance at betterment. Thus, their life is in stark contrast to the world described in their books. For the children, the words of these books are meaningless. Next, the poet speaks of Shakespeare and the map as being negative influences. They are wicked because the things the students see on the map or read in their books only function as temptation. The lives of the children are led in the dim, cramped reality of the slum. The children of the slum have a deprived existence. They are undernourished with their bones showing through skin. Even the spectacles some children require are made of cracked glass with heavy steel frames. They are forced to meet their needs with substandard and broken things, perhaps those that are discarded by others. The poet laments the fact that the existence of the children revolves around foggy slums. He declares in anger that the classroom maps should be covered with slums because most of these children will experience nothing else in their lives. In the end, the, poet's, the poet pleads to the authorities school governors or inspectors or even visitors to help these children break out of their limited existence. The children should be allowed to escape the repressive environment of the slum and the narrow windows which have doomed them to a life of misery and deprivation. They should be able to live a life that all children have a right to like playing out in the open, in the green fields, on the blue skies, and the bright sun, reading and learning. The last few lines are strongly expressive of the poet's wish for the children to live a fulfilling and natural life. The poet hopes that the children's future will be bright and that they will be able to successfully utilize the education that they get. Thank you.